Hello everyone. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about using normal distributions. So in the previous unit, we talked about probabil probability distributions and we looked at a certain type of probability distribution, which was the binomial one. Today, we're going to be talking about another type, which is normal trans er, distribution. And here we see that the graph of a normal distribution is bell-shaped. And this graph or this curve is called a normal curve. And something we see with a normal distribution is that when we graph it, it is symmetric about the mean. So that means if I were to take that graph and I were to fold it with the mean being on the crease, both sides would be identical to each other. And a normal distribution with mean mu and standard deviation sigma has the following properties. First, we see that the total area under the curve is one. And we see that about 68% of the data lies within one standard deviation of the mean. And we see that in this first graphic here. So about 68% of the data lies within one standard deviation. 95% of the data lies within two standard deviations of the mean and about 99.7% of the data lies within three standard deviations of the mean. And so we see that summarized in this first graphic and using that and the fact that the curve here is symmetric about the mean mu, we have these different uh, percentages or proportions that show up here. So since this whole thing is 68%, if I divide that by two, that means that both parts are equal to 34% and so on. And so we're going to use that in these problems below. So first let's practice finding normal probability. So it says a normal distribution has mean mu and standard deviation sigma. Find the indicated probability for a randomly selected x value from the distribution. So first I want to find the probability that mu minus 2 sigma is less than or equal to x, which is x less than or equal to mu. So I'm looking to find what that probability is between those two values. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up onto this graphic here, and you're going to want to have this handy when you are doing your homework. And I'm going to look to see what those areas are or what those percentages are between those two values. So I have mu minus two sigma. I see that right here. And I want to see all the way until mu. So I'm looking at these two areas. And so I see those correspond with 13.5%. And 34%. And so since it is with those, that means that this is just going to equal 0 0.135 because I changed that to a decimal plus 0 0.34. And when I add those, I get 0 0.475. Okay, let's look at the next one. So this next one says. I want to find the probability that x is less than or equal to mu. So I want the probability for all of the values less than that. So looking at here, there's my mu, and I want everything less. So I'm looking at that percentage, this area here, and here. So I'm looking at all four of these. So I want to add all of those together. And so I have 0.15%. If I change that to a decimal, I have to move it to places. So it's going to be 0 0.0015 plus 0 0.0235 plus 0 0.135 plus 0 0.34. And so when I add all those together, I get 0 0.5. Which makes sense because this is half of what we see in the picture because we know that the mean is in the center. And so this would make sense. Okay, let's look at the next one. So the next one, I'm looking between the values of mu and mu plus two sigma. 
And so that will be these two areas. And so I see that's 34% and 13.5%. So this is actually going to be the same thing as what we see above. So it's going to equal to 0 0.135 plus 0 0.34, which is equal to 0 0.475. And then looking at one last one, here I want to see the probability that x is now greater than or equal to mu plus sigma. So I see mu plus sigma here, and I want all values greater than it. So it's going to be these three areas. So 13.5%, 2.35%, and 0.15%. And so adding those, it's going to be 0. 135 plus 0 0.0235 plus 0 0.0015. And when I add all those together, I get 0 0.16.